Let's see it to work. So finished uh, this web application yesterday. CG synthetic single generator. Go check it out. It's on the website. On this page, I'll share it in the in the notes, in the comments, and that's working fine. There's no refresh button, but you can just refresh the page. And the other thing we would like to do is to, yeah, so that's a uh, synthetic EDG. Um, what we would like to do is have a C, uh, C, uh, feature extra uh, extraction uh, from it. So essentially something that labels the PQRS, PQRST waves. That puts them in, uh, sep labels them in separate colors. That would be nice. Let's see how well it will work. Uh, we had something previously working. We have the, the description for it and a video as well. Just to look like that. Yes, it will this level. With thirty second signal. Oh. Yeah, we'll label ECG as such. It was working nicely, unfortunate. unfortunately, uh, due to technical issues to reboot a whole, restart a whole server, so we don't have that backend. Therefore, this doesn't work anymore. But it's okay, because... Uh, we have JGPT to make a similar tool for us. Uh, so let's just polish uh, this. Where was that D7 coming from? I don't remember what that range. Range, 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 minimum, maximum. Is this? No, that's okay. I don't think we need the range. At least not the... Uh, not yet. I don't know why would we need one. So we have those as outputs. And we'll have a ECG chart as the usual. Uh, with different uh, ways in uh, different colors. We use American, American English. None of that. You <laughs> rubbish. Uh, P wave, Q R S T wave, E C G. And we also have uh, measurements for heart rate, mean, PR, interval, time, interval, mean, cure, ISO level, mean. I can use um, so we 
could use a neuro kit, which actually allows simulating ECG waveforms uh, flask, so it's available for you to play with. And NumPy, this relevant paper. Should we have a scroll? Do we need a scroll option? Just get away with window size. So this will be, oops, another input, outputs, uh, Python packages. Paper might be not so relevant. Old uh, structure. We have this description that we wrote a while back. We already punched something into. Just checking my mouse, I realized all my previous streams didn't have uh, the mouse cursor uh, visible. That's not cool. Now I'm checking that I actually see the mouse cursor all the time. Seem to be able to see it okay. Please let me know if I stuff something up like that. I would like to improve. And your feedback would be very valuable. Private calculations. What else do we have? Pitch extraction. Or we'll clean ECG signal. Maybe. Type classification. not really about type classification but uh, let's read our own Do I have any more requirements well not really let's read this quickly the ECG feature extractor is a prototype tool designed to analyze and label different components of an electrocardiogram ECG waveform with distinct colors enhancing visual clarity and facilitating accurate interpretation by splitting the ECG wave into T-Wave, QRS complex, and P-Wave, the extractor effectively segments and highlights each component, allowing clinicians and researchers to easily identify and analyze specific features. The color labeling provides a clear representation of the different ECG components, aiding in the identification of abnormalities and irregularities. Yeah, the description is okay-ish. In addition to segment labeling, the ECG feature extractor provides valuable quantitative measurements for several important parameters. It calculates the mean values for crucial metrics including heart rate, PR interval, QRS time, QT interval, and isoelectric level. These measurements offer valuable insights into cardiac activity and provide essential information for diagnosing and monitoring heart conditions. By automating the extraction and analysis of ECG features, this tool could streamline the interpretation process, save time, and help healthcare professionals make informed decisions based on accurate and standardized measurements. Hey, I'm right. We have the file structure. Hey, can we put all that? Know if order matters, probably. It is. So we have the folder structure. We have inputs. Outputs. So essentially it will be something similar to this. But yes, we'll have each uh, wave uh, labeled with a different color. So 
All right, so probably done with this, and we we don't want to display this anymore. We have a folder. Pop it this folder. Can close it. Uh, let's do this again. Make sure that the tool complies with the relevant medical and ethical guidelines and regulations. Well, this is um, synthetic. Uh, there's a good reason why this is synthetic uh, ECG. Based on the information you provided, you are looking to create a Flask web application using Python that can process and analyze ECG signals. That's right. The users can input ECG signals and select a window size in the ECG signal type. Yep. The application will then output an analyzed ECG chart with different wave components color coded, along with other statistical metrics like heart rate mean, PR interval mean, etc. Yeah, that's right. So we have the requirements file. Copy pasting is a skill, isn't it? Yeah, requirements. Yeah, we should have a uh, new kit, numpy flies, pandas, matplotlib, should have all of that already. This is mainly for reference. We'll deal with the flask uh, settings uh, once we have something working. Yeah, new kit, matplotlib, sample application structure. Yes, so they are, uh, it's the main Flask code. Handles the roots and the main functionality of the application. It will import the required libraries, load the ECG data, process it, and send the output to the front end. That's nice. That's the script JS. Handles any client-side JavaScript for the application, for example, to make asynchronous requests to update the ECG chart dynamically. bigger yeah we know what CSS does and the index HTML yeah we we would not have any um, what's the CGN Um, let's close this for a sec. In CSS, uh, let me actually copy this CSS. Should we copy everything from the previous uh, project? Templates. App a hey, my app the WSGI file. Hey, we don't need that. Copy in features extraction data should be empty for now, it will remain empty. That's the all old the uh, HTML file. This this one that doesn't doesn't work anymore. It's the one we are changing. We have JavaScript. CSS. And the main app application. So we can use... Um, we can start off this uh, app application a um, python code it essentially will be a more advanced uh, version of this so this one uh, it's this tool here so just uh, generating synthetic uh, signal it's not uh, doing any labeling we want to do labeling 
Just one sec. By the way, if you have any comments, suggestions, improvement, uh, please do let me know. Just by the way, my uh, YouTube analytics, if anyone is interested, I can uh, talk more about that. You have provided a Flask application that receives ECG parameters from the client side, generates a simulated ECG signal using the NeuroKit2 library, and returns the generated ECG signal as a response. The parameters include BPM, window size, various types of noise, and isoelectric voltage. Here, I'll provide a brief review of your code and suggest any necessary improvements. Did me or did just ignore what I was asking about before? Oh, I didn't upload it. Oh, I did upload it. Let's do this again. Requirements. Or should I give it the JavaScript uh, first? Do this with the JavaScript first. Your JavaScript code is for a web page that allows users to input parameters to generate a synthetic ECG signal using a Flask backend. When users change any input field in the form, it makes a post request to the Flask backend, retrieves the generated ECG data, and uses Plotly to plot the ECG data on the web page. Give me some example improvement. What's that all about? Here's an example of how you can add a loading spinner to provide feedback to the user when the ECG data is being huh. fetched. Assume you have a less than div it equals loader greater than less than div greater than in your HTML that contains a loading spinner, which is hidden by default. Now that's okay. I'll do it later. Mainly working on a different application, so. Given the provided information and requirements, I will focus on enhancing the app.py and script JS files to include features for analyzing and labeling different components of the ECG waveform with distinct colors and to calculate mean values for crucial metrics. That's right. It's modifying the Python. We will modify the Flask app to process the ECG signals and extract features such as P-Wave, PRS Complex, and T-Wave, then send these features to the front end to be plotted. It's doing everything in the same uh, in the same function. Okay, let's close all for a sec. We need to modify the JavaScript code to receive the extracted ECG features and plot them with different colors. Right. So we're using the same libraries. We have a uh, generate ECG as we had before. Okay, it says our code remains the same. We have the actual ECG generation over here. Okay, let's see. So it uncommented that this didn't actually mention anything about it. Okay, it's extracting here, but it's not actually saying how it's done I don't think this will actually work I'm turning into all this into JSON file I don't think this will work Okay, the JavaScript should have update plot there already. Edit all this stuff. 
and constant data. Just copy the whole constant data. And you plot a CG plot data layout. This remains the same. ECG analysis. Ensure you have thoroughly understood the NeuroGuid 2 library and how it processes and analyzes ECG signals. The extraction of Q-waves, QRS complexes, and T-waves should be validated with actual ECG data to ensure accuracy. Getting 500 error. Uh, why? Failing to load resources. Failing to load. I never really understood what's the difference between these errors here. Load them open. You have six errors. This one says some problems no longer generate console messages, but service has an issue. Okay. Is he having trouble with probably the HTML? Did not template. Might as well pop the styling. Uh, let's pop this in. I expect some variables to have different names. Or something like that. The HTML code you provided is a template for a web page that uses a form to gather parameters for generating an ECG waveform. It then passes these parameters to a backend service, which returns the ECG data to be plotted on the page using Plotly. The form includes various controls for manipulating the ECG waveform, including sliders for BPM, window size, and different types of noise. Your HTML is well structured, and you've made effective use of semantic HTML elements like less than header greater than, less than nav greater than, and less than form greater than. The inclusion of open graph meta tags at the top of your document is a nice touch for enhancing the shareability of your page. Your web page is well designed with interactive elements for generating custom ECG waveforms. Enhancements in code cleanliness, accessibility, SEO, and user feedback can make it more user friendly, accessible, and discoverable online. Yeah, that's fine. That's not what we are worrying about uh, yet. Data length is too small. Right, I've seen this error before. Uh, what's the problem? Can you solve this one for us? Please generating two responses. I want the one that I can read out loud. <laughs> it's pretty much the same, I see much difference. Suggesting logging stuff. I don't like when it says final thoughts as if it's finished working. Pretty sure I have all the packages installed. I think it is the, syn the syntax error. Pretty sure we are printing the error. Oops. Print data. Data length is too small. 25 seconds seem to do the processing. Still get uh, 500 for the generated ECG. That's not cool. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we don't actually have the ECG P-Wave. 
or she is not yet. Not sure why it's even trying to plot it. Not sure if NeuroKit can label individual waveforms. I don't think so. The main question. Does it even have an option to extract B wave? Pretty sure it doesn't. It says it does. This is general approach for using NeuroKit. ECG processing. Process the ECG signals using nk.ec underscore process, which will return a data frame containing various processed signals and a dictionary containing useful ECG features. Extracting waves. extracting waves. You can extract individual waves from the signal's data frame, which contains various processed and filtered versions of the ECG signal, including near peaks. Visualizing the ECG signal, you can use nk.ec underscore plot to visualize the processed ECG signal, which will display the air peaks, and if processed appropriately, other waveforms as well. It's a nice code. Does it actually work? Oops. Let's do some testing. For the confusion. It seems I made a mistake in the previous example. The nk.ec underscore plot function does not take a sampling underscore rate argument. You should be able to plot the ECG signals and our peaks just by passing the signals that frame dead. This poses some problems with the pandas library. This error is likely occurring because of changes in the pandas library where multidimensional indexing is no longer supported. It usually arises when you are trying to index a pandas data frame or series in a way that would return a multidimensional object. Know the source. It appears the error is emanating from the internal workings of the NeuroKit2 library, particularly when it tries to plot the ECG signals and is not something directly related to your code. This could likely be due to a version mismatch or some changes in pandas or other dependencies that NeuroKit2 relies on. A recommended approach is it involves changing the library's source code, which could lead to more issues down the line. However, if you're in a hurry and need a quick fix, you can trace back to the file and line number indicated in the error message and make necessary adjustments, such as converting the pandas object to an NumPy array before indexing. But this should be a last resort and done with caution. Wait for a patch. Okay. So I'm pretty sure a NeuroKit doesn't have an option to extract features. So I have to do it in a different way. If the error occurs during the plotting step and your main goal is to extract ECG features, you can bypass the plotting for now and focus on extracting the features you need from the signals and info objects returned by nk.ec underscore process. Pretty sure NeuroKit doesn't have an option to extract individual waves. We might have to use a different approach. Da, 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 da. Apologies for the confusion. Yes, you might need to resort to a more manual approach to extract the individual waves if the library doesn't provide a straightforward way. You can do this by utilizing the indices of the R peaks, P peaks, T peaks, etc., which can be computed from Neuroka 2 and then slice the ECG signal accordingly. Here's a basic example of how this could be achieved. Note that this approach involves estimating where the P and T waves are relative to the R peaks, which might not be extremely accurate and may need further tuning or a more sophisticated approach depending on your specific needs. Um, right, so this is more manual in your kit wouldn't have a automated uh, any functions extracting individual waveforms so I have to do it manually right CG, CG simulation I mean we still want to keep this essentially what we want what do we want we have a ECG signal generator what do we want we want to label a different parts of the signal 
when do we want it? Well, ideally in 10 minutes. That's how long we have in this stream. Okay. So it's ignored everything I said in the beginning. It's actually not a Flask application, it's just uh, a still testing mode. See if this works. It's surprising it does. Okay, how did you do it? <laughs> And that was quick. Yeah, okay, there's a problem. Just extracting the QRSs. Anyway, ideally we want something similar to this uh, video that we had. Uh, where... Where's the quality low? No, this matter. Right, this is better. Yeah, I want the P Q R S T in uh, separate colors. And uh, this is something else. It's only in this example only Q R S peak is being labeled in different colors instead can we use four colors and label p wave separately q notch separately r peak in a different color r in a different color and s peak wave in a different color. Let it deal with the messy text. Yes, certainly. You can achieve this by specifically segmenting each part of the ECG waveform, P wave, QRS complex, and T wave, and plotting them in different colors. However, you would need the precise indices of these components, and that might involve more sophisticated signal processing or machine learning methods to accurately identify each component. Nah, Here's a basic so... example of how this could be achieved with simplified assumptions. Yeah, assumptions Note that this are is great. a basic illustrative example, and for real-world applications, you would need more accurate methods to determine the exact boundaries of each wave component. Nah, that's fine. Explanation of the code. We're using NeuroKit 2 to get the R peaks. We then use yep. these R peaks to estimate the locations of the P waves and T waves. Yep. This is a rough estimate and should be refined for real-world data. We plot these separate segments in different colors. The by underscore label dictionary is used to eliminate duplicate labels in the legend. Remember, the accuracy of this approach depends highly on the precision of the P, Q, R, S, and T wave detection, and this code provides rough estimations. You may need more advanced algorithms or models for precise and reliable wave delineation, especially for real-world noisy ECG data. Right, this is more like it. The labeling off. The labeling is a bit off. I understand your concern. The labeling of ECG components can be refined by identifying specific points for P, Q, R, S, and T waves individually. However, this would require a more advanced approach than the simple estimation used in the previous example. Oh, Here's a more detailed point. example using artificial indices to label each component individually. Please note that these are still estimates, and in a real-world application, you would need to employ advanced signal processing techniques or machine learning models to accurately identify these components. In this revised code, I've adjusted the indices for segmenting the ECG into P, Q, R, S, and T waves individually, and each of them is colored differently. I've increased the total window around each R peak to accommodate individual labeling of all five components. I've made sure to make the indices relative to each R peak, so it dynamically adjusts based on the position of each R peak. Remember to replace these estimated indices with the actual indices of each wave component for precise labeling. This can be achieved using more advanced signal processing methods or machine learning models trained for ECG signal delineation. This last labeling is a bit messy. Can we assume that... So we're finding R 
peaks, can we then just assume that the peak beforehand is Q and the peak after that is S and adjacent to the R peak you have Q and S. It's by the way not quite right, but uh, Certainly, we can simplify the labeling with these assumptions. Here's the updated code to reflect those changes. Okay, we have like four minutes to turn it into a Flask application. <laughs> Publish. <laughs> can we do that? In this version, the segment just before each R peak is assumed to be the Q wave, and the segment just after is assumed to be the S wave. The P wave is assumed to be before the Q wave, and the T wave is assumed to be after the S wave. Please keep in mind these are simplifications, and for a real-world application, you'd likely need a more sophisticated approach to identify these components accurately, especially in the presence of noise or arrhythmias. Also, the current code will plot the S wave and the R wave with the same color because they are in the same range. You may need to adjust the indices accordingly based on your specific requirements. Yeah, the previous one was better, wasn't it? The previous code was producing better results. Uh, can we keep the R peak label as a dot? Once we have that, can we assume that the negative peaks on the left and right are Q and S. Can we also assume that before Q we have a positive T wave? Can we assume that after T negative peak we have a positive T wave? Certainly. We can improve the labeling by marking our peaks with dots and making more informed assumptions about the positions of P, Q, S, and T waves. We will search for negative peaks around the R peaks to identify Q and S waves and assume the positive peaks before Q and after S as P and T waves respectively. Here's an improved version of the code. In this improved code, our peaks are marked with red dots. Q and S waves are identified as the negative peaks before and after the R peaks, respectively, within a certain window. P waves are assumed to be the positive peaks before the Q waves. T waves are assumed to be the positive peaks after the S waves. The labels are added as dots to make the graph less cluttered. This approach should give you more accurate labeling of the ECG components. Make sure to adjust the window sizes and thresholds according to the specific characteristics of the ECG signals you are working with. Apologies for the confusion. It looks like the distance underscore min parameter isn't available in the version of Neurokid 2 you are using. We can still proceed by just using the height underscore min parameter to filter out the smaller peaks, or we can implement an alternative method to find the peaks. Here is the corrected code. I removed the distance underscore min parameter and kept the height underscore min parameter to filter out the peaks based on their heights. This should help to avoid smaller peaks that are too close to the R peaks while still identifying the Q, S, P, and T waves effectively. P wave and T wave are mislabeled. There should be local maximas before Q and after S. Can you fix this? Certainly. I apologize for the oversight. I'll fix the code to correctly identify the P and T waves as the local maximums before Q and after S, respectively. Here's the revised code. In this revised code, I've added a check to ensure that the P and T waves are positive peaks. The P wave is identified as the highest positive peak before the Q wave within a given window. The T wave is identified as the highest positive peak after the S wave within a given window. These modifications should result in more accurate labeling of the P and T waves in the ECG signal. 
Adjust the window sizes and thresholds as needed for your specific ECG signals. Not messing it up. Uh, why? This number is potentially too small. Okay, let me know if there's any suggestions or anything I can improve. Uh, what am I doing wrong? And we over one hour. There's nothing in the chat. Take a break and see you in a bit. Bye.